in Romans 1.27. And in like manner, the men also, leaving the natural use of women, have burned in their lusts toward one another, men with men working that which is filthy, and receiving in themselves the recompense which was due to their error. Am I calling on anyone to hate these people? No, I'm calling on them, on us, to do what Francis will not do. Pray for their conversion. These men need sacrifices for sinners. They need reparation. They need rosaries. They need prayer. They need the truth about what they're doing. And I've expressed it to people who have this problem without hesitation. And you have to do it in a charitable way. We are always guided by the proposition, hate the sin. And God hates no sin more than this one, but love the sinner. A lot of these people come from backgrounds that would seem, in a large measure, predetermined that they would end up hating women. They deserve pity and spiritual assistance. Now, it isn't just moral theology, but the doctrines of the faith generally that Bergoglio has subjected to the sulfuric acid, as it were, of discernment. The term discernment is used 35 times in Amoris Laetitia to justify situation ethics, and at least three times in Fiducia Supplicans to justify blessings for couples engaging in sodomy. Discernment destroys doctrine and threatens the welfare of souls. We discern, according to this notion, whether in our concrete circumstances we should follow this or that teaching of the church. Now that is not discernment in the traditional sense. Ignatian discernment is about things like, what is my vocation? What decision should I make? Should I be a priest? Should I marry? Should I go to that school or the other school? Should I take this woman as my wife? Should I take that job? Is that the job God wants me to take? That's discernment. You don't discern whether you follow God's law. So he has totally abused the notion of discernment. Now, one telling example of this is a sermon he gave in December of 2022. He says a lot of beautiful things in this sermon, and modernists always do this in their lengthier documents. They see a lot of nice things. But within the pious language, there is always the poison pill. And so he says, this love reminds us of another great help, the gift of the Holy Spirit who is present in us and who instructs us, makes the word of God that we read come alive, suggests new meanings, opens doors that seem closed. New meanings, opening doors that seem to be closed. This is the era of illuminism. We think to ourselves, what is the truth? And God illuminates us individually. The only problem is the only illuminism he wants is his illuminism. So how does discernment work for the sinner? He says this. Father, quoting someone who's in sin, I've done something really bad. I need to go to confession. Help me. I did this really awful thing. Father, I am in mortal sin. And he responds, that does not matter. Speak with him, meaning the Holy Ghost, so that he will help you and forgive you. Never abandon dialogue with the Holy Spirit. So see how he quells the conscience of a hypothetical Catholic who was riven with guilt because he's committed in, in a mortal sin and actually tries to deter him from seeking immediate access to the sacrament of confession, telling him to dialogue with God and said, don't worry about your mortal sin, just dialogue with the Holy Spirit. Now this is the essence of the Protestant version of forgiveness. I don't need a priest to forgive my sins. I just talk to God and he forgives me. Now, as to doctrine in general, this discernment, a form of illuminism, is the meta-doctrine of Bergoglianism. It trumps everything. And here he dares to cite St. Vincent of Lerins, who makes the comparison between the growth of a human being and doctrine. And according to him, and I'm quoting him, Human biological development can be likened to the deposit of the faith, which grows and is consolidated with the passage of time. Here, our understanding of the human person changes with time, and our consciousness also deepens. The other sciences and their evolution help the church in this growth of understanding. Now, this is another outrageous abuse 
of a doctor of the church. Because what St. Vincent of Laren says is that what grows in the sense of a further development of teaching, as with usury, for example, is the understanding of an invariable principle of doctrine, not a new doctrine. And the formula he enunciated is that we believe what is believed everywhere at all times by everyone. In Latin, quad ubique, quad semper, quad ab omnibus, creditum est. That doesn't change. But according to Bergoglio, doctrine evolves as our consciousness evolves. By means of this Bergoglian discernment, then, all Catholic doctrine is subject to modification over time. And anyone who says otherwise is, according to him, a rigid ideologue. How many times have we heard him call us ideologues? But who is the most rigid and intolerant of ideologues? It is he. Now, the vehicle by which he attacks Catholic theology, which it reduces to an ideology, is the synodal process, the soul of the church. We've talked about the liturgy and the theology. Now we get to the soul of the church. And listen to this illuminist nonsense about synods. This is the church we are called to dream, a church that is the servant of all, a church that never demands an attestation of good behavior, but welcomes and serves and loves and forgives. The Lord will guide us and help us to, a more, to be a more synodal and missionary church. But here's the thing about this imaginary synodal church. It's just an elaborate disguise for the advancement of what he alone wishes to achieve. The invocation of the Holy Spirit in the process of discernment is a sham. And as Cardinal Muller pointed out, the synodalists are always talking about the spirit, but what they're really talking about is their own thinking. And as the Cardinal observed, the synodal process is designed to bring about, if it were possible, and I'm quoting him, a hostile takeover of the Church of Jesus Christ. To which I would add that the hostile takeover is being led by one man, the current occupant of the chair of Peter. Discernment, as I say, is a sham. Regolio is not discerning anything. He already knows exactly where he's going. He has known it from the minute he became Pope. And he's been going in that direction relentlessly for the past 11 years with, thank God, increasing resistance from we the faithful. And don't let yourself be distracted when he faints to the right every now and then. Like the, like the recent statement by the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith. I'll be done in five minutes, by the way for maintaining the proper formulas of the sacraments. In the midst of all this confusion, reforming everything, they come, oh, by the way, don't change the formulas of the sacraments. We've changed everything else, but not this. Well, why not? What's the rationale for leaving those formulae intact? There is no rationale, because they've eliminated the rationale, because this is a mobilist church. Everything must be reformed. And don't think, by the way, that he's given up on ordaining women. 